Hello, and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Today, we're gonna to be talking all about the good old triple leaf effect. So if you are curious about what the triple leaf effect is in soundproofing, or you've heard about it, and you're fearing it, a lot of people come to me and they're like, oh my gosh, is that a triple leaf effect? And I have to reassure them, no, usually it's not. Sometimes it is, but for the most part, you know, just understanding the concepts behind the triple leaf effect is what we're going to talk about in this video. So let's jump into that. Before we jump in though, I do want to say I have a free resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. Uh, it is 45 minutes of all the goods delivered right to you uh, right away. Uh, you can stream it right from the link. So to download that and watch it right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right. Let's jump into this lesson on what is the triple leaf effect. So before we can jump into the triple leaf effect definition, we need to first understand the underlying physics behind it. And that is the mass spring mass system. So whenever we're soundproofing, the main component to it, and this is super important to understand, is that you're going to have mass, meaning something like drywall, two layers of 5 8 inch drywall is mass, um, a concrete block wall filled with sand is mass, a brick wall is mass, anything that we build to try to isolate is going to have mass to it. But then there's another component to it. We need the spring. And the spring is usually an air gap. Air acts as a spring. And we then have another wall, another massive system that can be concrete, brick, drywall, two layers of 5 8 inch drywall. So that is the mass spring mass system. Now let's look at a, an example here of how this could work with concrete walls first, because this makes it more, makes it easier to understand than looking at the drywall walls. So if we have, for example, a concrete wall with an eight inch air gap between the two concrete, concrete walls, that will be superior. It'll have better sound isolation, better soundproofing than if we had the same concrete walls with a four inch air gap. The reason for this is that when we decrease the air gap, we increase the rigidity of the spring. All right, so that's like, okay, let me wrap my head around this. Let's take a simple example. We all played with slinkies as a kid growing up, right? So let's take a slinky. If you and your friend pulled the slinky out as far as it could go and you started shaking it up and down, it was really loose, right? It would bounce up around and it was a very loose spring. Now, if we take the slinky and your parents are like, put the dang slinky away, you put it up, and it just compacts on itself and it's a very rigid spring, almost like a solid piece of wood or like a solid object. Now in our walls, this spring situation, the slinky metaphor that I'm using here is the exact same. If we increase the air gap, the air inside the wall becomes like the loose slinky and it can vibrate more freely. And because of that, the sound that hits the loose sprinky, slinky gets moved around and starts vibrating and those air molecules can move more easily and it turns the sound into heat, which is good for sound isolation because it transfers the sound into something else that we don't hear, which is in this case heat. If we decrease the air gap between those two concrete walls, it's like we took that slinky and we just pushed it together. And in, in essence, if your air gap is too tight, the sound will go through the air more easily because it acts more like a more rigid substance. And the rigidity of the spring is what causes it to transfer sound more easily one way or the other. So to simplify this idea, the looser the slinky, the bigger the air gap, the better. The tighter the slinky, the more rigid, the smaller the air gap, the worse your isolation will be. So now that we understand that very crucial aspect of our soundproofing system with the air gap, the often overlooked air gap, the spring that most people don't think about, we now can understand the triple leaf effect. So to explain the triple leaf effect, let's look at this diagram here. We have several different wall structures. We can see here that in the first wall structure here where we have just two stud walls with drywall on either side placed side by side with an air gap between them, you only get an STC rating of 40. That's not very good. And you're probably surprised because logically just taking two walls and putting them side by side should be soundproof, right? We have two walls stopping sound. But the problem lies in, you guessed it, the air gap got 
smaller between the two walls. So now let's look at another example. Let's take one, one of our drywall layers out, and you can see right next to that that you increase the STC rating, but it's still not great. In this case, you get an STC of 50. Now, if we take both layers of drywall out of the inner part of that wall system and place it now on the outside, we get on the far right wall an STC of 63, which is what is usually recommended for soundproofing uh, because an STC rating of 63 is really good for studios and broadcast studios and things like that. So the reason this works is if we go back to our example before, by increasing the air gap, we now go from the inside drywall of one wall to the inside drywall of the other wall. Think about that. It's not just the one inch air gap between our studs that we usually recommend. It's the 3.5 inches of the thickness of our two by four studs. If you have two by six studs, it's even better. You get even more air space. Now you might say, oh, what about the insulation? Doesn't that decrease the airspace? No, this is a huge fallacy out there and it, another fallacy in our thinking. Mineral wool or fiberglass insulation actually has nothing to do with the airspace. Sound will travel through that fiberglass like it's air, but it will get caught in the little fibers, increasing the isolation. Again, it's a damping system. It's turning the sound into heat, just like the spring would. So our spring actually goes from inside a drywall to inside a drywall. In the case of the big concrete wall, it would be from the edge of the concrete to the edge of the concrete. As a little side note, you know, if you had a concrete wall with a one inch air gap, you'd have all this mass, but your spring would still be really tight. So we still might want to increase the air gap as much as we can afford to lose in our studio space. So the third thing I want to talk about is do not fear the triple leaf effect. And I'm going to talk about an example here that will show you a real life way of something I encounter all the time when I'm designing studios inside of existing buildings. And this is the idea that people start thinking they're getting a triple leaf effect when in fact they're not. So let's take a garage, for example. Let's say you have a, an existing garage with really flimsy, lightweight walls. Let's say it's like tin siding or really, really lightweight um, paneled siding that's plastic, and you really have not much mass on the outside of your garage. So you're like, ah, I don't really wanna add mass to the outside because that means ripping off all the siding. It will actually be cheaper and easier to just build my double wall system inside the garage and not connect it to the outside walls at all. This is a common thing. It's something I've designed in many studios that I've been working on. And a lot of people might think, oh, you're building a triple leaf effect because you have the outside garage wall. If we look at this diagram here, you have some space, then you build another wall, then you build your other double wall system. Remember getting that ST3, STC of 63 rating. And you might say, oh, there's three walls, triple leaf. This is terrible. Don't do it. But you'd be wrong because our inside wall is still giving us the double wall system, that inside two air gap thing what, that we just talked about with an SDC of 63, is still giving us the SDC rating of 63. Imagine you didn't have the, the outside garage wall at all. It still would function as an isolation wall. And this is where people go get off a little bit with their thinking. What I actually look at is that the garage wall is kind of like a bonus wall because it's gonna add another mass spring mass layer in the system, which is only gonna increase isolation. It's not gonna hurt isolation. Now, if I did take drywall and put it between my double layer system in between, like we talked about before, yes, that would be a triple leaf effect and would decrease the isolation in our system. But simply having three walls does not automatically mean you have a triple leaf system and it's not necessarily a bad thing. So I just wanted to clear that up. This can happen in roof systems. This can happen in many situations you could do. Um, I recently did an isolation wall system with the double wall in a studio. And then I built a, an acoustic wall inside of that. And the client was like, well, isn't the acoustic wall a triple leaf effect? And I said, no, this is only increasing your isolation. And the acoustic wall is in fact actually helping with the absorption of low frequencies and increasing the isolation overall. So it's a good thing and it does not create a triple leaf effect. So as long as we understand the underlying mechanics of soundproofing, we don't get caught up with these terms like triple leaf effect that might throw you on a, you know, the wrong direction in your design just because someone on the internet said, oh my God, it's a triple leaf effect. So I hope that clears everything up. And in conclusion, make sure you know the underlying mechanics of the mass spring mass system. As long as you stick to that, the more mass you have, the larger the spring on either side of your walls, the better. That's always gonna be the case when it comes to sound isolation. 
the goal is to hit your target isolation metric, which, you know, a lot of people are going to say, Wilson, what is that? Well, the STC 63 is a great starting place for most studios. If you need more isolation, add more drywall on either side of your system. That will increase your isolation. Increase the spring. That will also increase your isolation. Uh, use concrete blocks instead of wood drywall. That will increase your isolation. So if we're trying to isolate something really, really loud, we're going to need to use the heavier duty isolation methods versus if we're just trying to isolate like voice or something like that, we can use less mass and a smaller spring. Lastly, if you encounter the situation like I talked about in the fearing the triple leaf section, notice that you're not always gonna have a triple leaf system just because you have three walls. It really means if you're decreasing that airspace for some reason, decreasing, tightening up the spring, that is gonna hurt your isolation more than if you just have three walls but still have a really solid isolation system within that three wall system. All right, I hope this has been really enlightening and helpful with this dreaded triple leaf effect that gets kind of overblown out there in a lot of uh, the internet websites and blogs and forums and stuff. So. If you have found this helpful, definitely check out my free soundproofing workshop. You can watch it right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. I look forward to teaching you more about soundproofing and room acoustics every Monday, new videos every week. I'll see y'all later.